Have you ever wondered what your soul really looks like? Imagine if someone could see the state of your soul as clearly as looking into a mirror. Today, we'll explore a miraculous dream of St. John Bosco that did just that for his boys. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Adrian Fonseca. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In this episode, I will reveal to you a miraculous dream of Don Bosco and the marvelous effects its retelling had on the oratory boys. Before we begin, here are some themes to think about during the video. Self-reflection and honesty about our spiritual state are crucial for growth. How a spiritual mentor can provide valuable insights into our spiritual journey. And a question for you. If you could see the state of your soul... What do you think it would look like? How might this knowledge change your actions and your decisions? And if you're inspired by Don Bosco's unwavering commitment to his faith and to his flock, consider becoming a monthly donor to support the continuation of his work. The details are in the description box down below, but for now, let's dive in to our story. The long-lasting effects of the above described dream on Don Bosco's boys were simply amazing. Father Dominic Rofino and Father John Bonetti reported these effects in their chronicles. Together they present a fairly complete narrative of what was happening at the oratory in the spiritual realm. They tell us of an unremitting struggle between good and evil, between the spirit of light and the spirit of darkness, of victories and defeats of falls and rises. They also provide you and me with a good picture of the work of God's minister, a fire with zeal, enlightenment, and strength from above. Don Bosco heartens the young fighters facing formidable, mysterious battles, strengthens the brave ones, and drives back the obstinate foe. This astonishing spiritual battle of the will takes on greater dimensions as other dreams and incidents follow one after another during this year, highlighting wonders such as the spiritual struggles of the individual boys and clerics, their calling to the Salesian congregation or the priesthood, the future of their earthly lives, and the growth of the Salesian congregation. First, I will tell you what had been written in Father Bonetti's chronicle. Dated January 1st, 1861, Don Bosco had a hard time trying to shake off the boys. They seemed to swore about him on the first day of the new year. One wanted to know if he was among the deceased, another if his heart was clogged with clay, a third if his totals had been approved, and why he had been given the bittersweet cookies and biscuits. Wishing to satisfy all as a good father would, Don Bosco spent nearly the whole day with these boys, as one by one they trustingly went to him to learn their spiritual condition. He told them the section of the dream that concerned them, and then, as was his custom, gave them a personal message for the new year. Don Bonetti's message read, Seek souls, and you will give your soul to God. We cannot estimate how much good this dream did for the boys. Let's just say that those who had been unmoved by the good example of their companions, the saving advice of their superiors, or even the talks of several retreats, were finally shaken and vied with each other in making a general confession to Don Bosco himself, who deeply rejoiced at our Lord's signal favor to his beloved boys. Anxious to see everyone take advantage of this special grace, he told us things that would thoroughly convince us that this mysterious dream of his was one of those gifts which God occasionally gives to his chosen souls. Dated January 10th, 1861. Today, another incident further convinced the boys that God had used that extraordinary dream to show Don Bosco his children's spiritual condition. And this is what happened. A boy had repeatedly kept back a sin in confession. During these days of salvation, 
increasingly troubled by remorse of conscience, he decided to make a general confession to Father Matthew Pagel who was then just beginning to come to the oratory for the purpose of priestly ministry. The lad told his past sins, but when he came to that particular sin, he again felt shame and concealed it. That same morning on his way to the sacristy, he met Don Bosco on the stairs. When will you come for your general confession? Don Bosco asked. I've made it already, he replied. You must not say that. Yes, Father, I made it the day before yesterday to Father Pico. Don Bosco insisted. Nonsense, lad. You made no general confession. Tell me, why did you keep back this sin? The youngster hung his head, and tears welled in his eyes. Sobbing, he went to the sacristy and made a most comforting and complete confession. The cleric John Cagliero, who had heard Don Bosco's account of this dream and was friendly with all the boys, questioned this lad who somewhat reluctantly told him the above-mentioned incident. However, Don Bosco himself never revealed to anyone but the interested person what he had learned about him in dreams. This mutual exchange of confidence between Don Bosco and the pupils who had experienced this loving solicitude for their spiritual welfare made it even clearer that it was God who spoke through Don Bosco's mouth. On the morning of January 12, 1861, Don Bosco called a boy to his room and said, Last night, I saw death threaten you with his scythe. I grabbed him by the arm. Let go, he cried, facing me. This boy is unfit to live. Why should he go on living when he does not respond to your care and abuses God's favor? I begged him to spare you. And he disappeared. Surprised and shaken, the poor fellow tearfully made his confession at once and resolved to lead a better life. At the good night that evening, Don Bosco told his dream without saying who it was about or that it concerned someone at the oratory. The incident would have remained unknown except that the same night, a certain boy named Bartholomew went up to the cleric Bonetti and confided to him that he was the one in Don Bosco's dream. He also candidly admitted that he had not made a good confession since his first communion, but that his conscience was now in order. Now we will shift to the content that was found around the same time in Father Rufino's Chronicle. And many boys look worried, sad, and troubled, as several getting ready for general confession. Very many wanted to speak to Don Bosco. To each he revealed most important intimate matters of conscience. I saw a few cry as if they had been told their very bad news. Others were glad because they had been reassured. A young cleric whom I know well asked Don Bosco about his spiritual condition. Be brave, he said, and try to detach your heart from worldly things. Do your utmost to banish darkness from your mind? and come to understand what true selfless piety is. Through confession, endeavor to purify your heart of anything which may still taint it. Enliven your faith, which is essential to understanding and achieving piety. That is my assessment of your spiritual state. The oratory is singularly blessed. We have boys, Don Bosco said to a large number of youngsters crowding around him during recreation, who are even more devout than Dominic Savio. One especially hardly ever noticed by his schoolmates can tell me after Mass the distractions and thoughts that I had while saying it. Sunday, January 13th, 1861. Most of the artisans, especially the bookbinders, made general confessions without being urged by anyone to do so. 
A youngster said to Don Bosco on the playground, Father, nearly all of us went to confession at Christmas. How come so many of us were in such a bad shape in your dream? You are asking me something I am not free to say, Don Bosco replied. I know the reason, and strictly speaking can reveal it, but not to everyone. I will tell it privately only to those concerned if they ask. But many things I cannot tell even privately. Now, after consulting both Father Bonetti and Father Rufino's chronicles, we finally arrive at a picture of what transpired in this dream that had the oratory all of us. On January 13th, 1861, at the good night, Don Bosco said, As things stand now, I feel I must speak clearly about the dream which, as I told you, and lasted three consecutive nights, December's 28th, 29th, and 30th. The first night we discussed current theology and the dream enlightened me on many matters. The second night we debated contemporary moral cases bearing especially on the spiritual condition of the oratory boys. The third night we dealt with individual cases and I came to know the spiritual condition of each and every boy. At first, I refused to give the dreams any importance, for God forbid such conduct in the Holy Scriptures. But these past few days, after checking privately with several boys on what I had learned of them in the dream, and being assured of the truth of my knowledge, I could no longer doubt that God was giving the oratory boys an extraordinary grace. I feel bound then to tell you that the Lord is speaking to you loudly and clearly. Woe to those who will not heed him. Father Cafaso made all go into a long hall and gave each one a tablet. Some had all their accounts in order. Others had numbers but no totals. Did every boy get a tablet? No, because many were outside, lying on straw mattresses or seated on benches. On the ground were in the mud. Some boys were covered with hideous wounds and sores. Those who had received their tablets went out to play, but not all took part in the games because many had a mist over their eyes, were blindfolded, and still others had moth-eaten hearts. Those whose totals had been approved are those whose consciences are in order. Those whose numbers had not been totaled are those whose consciences are in order, but they have not yet summed matters up by going to confession. It is clear from what we have seen in this video that God was granting extra special grace to Don Bosco's boys. They must have indeed been very dear to his heart. What each boy learned about his state of soul was perhaps a bitter pill to swallow but for many it was a wonderful opportunity to know just what he had to do to get his soul right with God. What wouldn't you or I do to receive such a grace? The profound impact of Don Bosco's dream on the boys of the oratory is truly inspiring. It shows us the transformative power of self-reflection and spiritual guidance. And speaking of spiritual guidance, you too can play a part in continuing Don Bosco's mission of nurturing young souls by becoming a monthly promoter of the miracles and prophecies of St. John Bosco. You can help spread his wisdom and values to future generations. As a monthly promoter of the miracles and prophecies of St. John Bosco, you'll receive spiritual benefits, including mass remembrances and daily rosary intentions. Your generosity not only supports our mission, but also connects you more deeply to the work of St. John Bosco. Depending on your level of support, you may receive beautiful religious items that serve as tangible reminders of Don Bosco's enduring legacy. One offering that I'm particularly excited about is a set of two books, Sacred History and Roadmap to Heaven, both authored by Don Bosco himself. It's like Don Bosco is becoming your own spiritual director. Your monthly gift, no matter the amount, makes a real difference. It helps us shape future generations with Don Bosco's values and his wisdom, continuing his work of nurturing young souls through education, faith, and joy.
The link to become a monthly promoter is in the description box down below, so join us in this vital mission and be a part of Don Bosco's lasting impact on the world. In this remarkable story, we've witnessed how God used a dream to reveal the spiritual state of Don Bosco's boys. This extraordinary grace led to profound transformations, with many boys making sincere confessions and resolving to lead better lives. The lessons that we can learn is that honest self-reflection guided by spiritual wisdom can lead to significant personal growth and a deeper relationship with God. But what did you think about today's episode? Has it inspired you to approach challenges in your own life in a maybe a different way? Leave a comment in the comment section down below because I would personally love to know what you think and I'm sure others will as well. Thank you for joining me today. St. John Bosco, pray for us. May God bless you and Mary Immaculate keep you under her mantle. God love you.